Hi, I'm Heather with the UC Davis Tahoe Science Center, and I want to welcome you to our virtual science tour. Today we're going to talk about the trees of Tahoe, and I want to share with you the eight most common trees of Lake Tahoe. Okay, so this is the sugar pine. This is the tallest of Tahoe's trees. It can be almost 200 feet tall, and it has the largest cone. You can see a couple sizes of the cones, but it does get to these quite large cones. The branches are hard to reach because the lower branches fall off of the tree, but I had found a baby sugar pine. And the thing about the sugar pines is when you see them, they look quite a bit feathery and soft because where most, most pine trees have two or three needles per cluster, a sugar pine has five. And so you can see the five needles. And sugar also has five letters, and that's an easy way to remember it. Mm -mm -mm. This pine is one of the more common pines now, and this is the lodgepole pine, and I can really recognize it by its bark. The bark looks like cornflakes in a way, and the branches are um, not as feathery as the sugar pine, and when I grab the um, needles, they come off in two, and the way I remember lodgepole pine is those two needles make an L for lodgepole. And the lodgepole pine has these cute little cones, and those cones can also be attached right on the branch. And so you'll see the cones attached right on there. The next two pines of Tahoe are the ponderosa pine and the Jeffrey pine. And the branches look incredibly similar. They'd be impossible to tell apart if you just had a branch. And the way you can tell that it is either a Jeffrey or a ponderosa is because it has three needles and they both have that long three needles. Um, that one's a little bent, but you get the idea, and they're all connected together. Um, the pine cones are a little bit different. The ponderosa pine is slightly smaller than the Jeffrey pine cone. Not always, because you can also have smaller Jeffrey cones, but the real way is that the Jeffrey pine cone, the prickers, poke in a little bit. So this is a gentle cone. I can put my hands on it without getting stuck on it. This one, you have to be really careful because these poke out. And so we say prickly ponderosa and gentle Jeffrey. The other thing that's representative of a ponderosa pine is that the bark, when the bark, if you were to break off a piece of the bark, it breaks apart and looks like these little puzzle pieces. So I think of prickly ponderosa and puzzle ponderosa. Whereas the Jeffrey, with its gentle cones, this bark is a little bit darker. And if you get your nose in the tree, you can smell a delicious vanilla or butterscotch smell. And so the gentle Jeffrey has that delicious smell. Okay, the next two trees we're going to talk about are both fir trees. And fir trees have much shorter needles. You can see that they're just about an inch or so long. And uh, the two main firs that we have are white fir, and you see that it's flat with short needles, versus the red fir, which looks a little bit more like a toothbrush. They point up. And so these, uh, these needles are short, and that's how we know that they're fir. Um, one thing about, that's tricky about a young white fir is that they can sometimes start pointing up a little bit. So if you're looking at brand new growth, it can be confusing, but the main way to tell the difference is that white fir grows near lake level and red fir grows up at higher elevations. So another way to tell the difference between the white fir and the red fir is that the red fir is round and they go around the branch where the white fir is wide. So red for round and uh, white for wide. This beautiful tree is a cedar tree, and it is very easy to recognize because of its flat, fern-like leaves and its smooth cinnamon red bark. And the bark is very obvious when you see it because it's so red and it has this very unique and um, distinct uh, look to it that makes it a cedar. Okay, last but not least, 
This is a quaking aspen, and right now the leaves are green, but in the fall, these leaves were t will turn yellow and fall off. This is our most common deciduous tree, so it loses its leaves for the winter. So this would be a great plant to put on the south side of your building because it would provide shade for you in the summer, but wouldn't prevent the sun from coming in in the winter. And it is a quaking aspen. Thanks for joining us at the UC Davis Tahoe Science Center. We hope you'll come visit soon.